Good afternoon, dear friends and Paul parishioners. I'm Father Peter Damien from St. Paul the Apostle. This afternoon, I'm going to continue our reading of Gaudete in Domino, Pope Paul VI's uh, Apostolic Exhortation on Christian Joy. Before I do that, I wait as I usually do uh, a couple of minutes for, uh, for you to join me. Uh, good, more, good afternoon, Mary and Pam. Welcome. Uh, there are a lot of exciting things uh, today, and, uh, and uh, I just want to share with you as I'm speaking. Uh, finally, our church sign is being installed, our new church sign. We've been waiting for it for almost a year, if you can believe it or not, through going through all the hoops of, um, of, uh, of bureaucracy to make that happen. Um, and through the pandemic and all that. So um, that is another sign of uh, renewal and a sign of great joy. So when you come to church um, today or, or tomorrow in the next day, you know, you're going to see something new right there on the front lawn of the church. So welcome, Linda. Welcome, Mary Jo. Congratulations, Mary Jo, on being the Philippians Award recipient. I, I uh, very much enjoyed uh, seeing, um, seeing the news today from, from Michelle and uh, well-deserved, well-deserved. Um, it's a joy to, to see the good existing in our community so, and to celebrate it. So thank you for that. So let's start with our noon prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Queen of heaven, rejoice, alleluia, for he whom you did merit to bear, alleluia, has risen as he said, alleluia. Pray for us to God, alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary, alleluia, for the Lord is truly risen, alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who gave joy to the world through the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, Grant, we beseech you, that through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, his mother, we may obtain the joys of everlasting life through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, wonderful. We continue reading today Gaudete in Domino, Pope Paul VI's uh, Apostolic Exhortation on Christian Joy. And today we, we, we talk about a particular joy. Um, last time... And that was not yesterday, as I was, uh, that was two days ago. Um, uh, we talked about, um, um, about the joy um, uh, for various categories of, of people today, a joy for all the people. And, and we saw how in how many ways, how many areas of life we are called to live joy, uh, Christian joy. And today we're going to um, into another another chapter that is um, another section that is focused on the young. So uh, among those categories, uh, we saw that Pope Paul VI starts with, uh, with the children, but there's a, special, uh, and there's, there's a special category that he didn't address there, and that is the young people. And so this is the sec section six is what we're going to read today. So, uh, let's start right away. So, joy and hope in the hearts of the young, sixth um, section. Without detracting from the fervor of our message to the whole people of God, we wish to take the time to address ourselves at greater length to the world of the young. We do so with special hope. That's beautiful. Right there, you can see, right, when you think about youth and youthfulness, um, there's always the great horizon of hope, right? You have a whole life in front of you. So, um, so I, I like that association. Uh, the world of the young and hope. If in fact the church regenerated by the Holy Spirit in a certain sense constitutes the true youth of the world, as long as she remains faithful to her being and to her mission, how could she fail spontaneously and preferably to recognize herself in those who feel themselves to be the bearers of life and hope and of the task of ensuring that there will be a tomorrow for the history of today. And vice versa, how can those who in every period of this history more intensely experience them in themselves the impetus of life, the expectation of hope for the future, the need for true renewal, not be secretly in harmony with the church animated by the Spirit of Christ? 
How could they not expect from the church the revelation of her secret of permanent youth and therefore the joy of their own youth? So I will stop here for a second and just, just reflect a little bit on this. So Pope Paul VI starts this address to and reflection uh, on joy in the world of the young. And he speaks right off the bat about about the youthfulness of the church and how, pay attention to this. He says, the fa if in fact the church regenerated by the Holy Spirit in a certain sense constitutes the true youth of the world, as long as she remains faithful to her being and to her mission. So notice there, I, I never heard this definition of the church, okay? Uh, I... I one of the areas that uh, that I love about theology and in which I, I was blessed over the years to um, to um, to dedicate um, uh, you know my studies towards and that is called ecclesiology um, the um, the um, uh, the understanding of, of the church um, and so uh, that's a particular branch of, of ecclesiology um, I, I never heard this definition of the church the church constitutes the true youth of the world. So just think about that. In our minds, especially in the Western world, because of the long heritage of, of Christianity that we have, in our mind, the church, we associate it with the past. We, we associate her, actually, because we should refer to the church as, as, as her in the feminine, um, Christ, the bride of Christ. So we associate the church in our mind with the past and with tradition, which is true, it's beautiful, and for which we are grateful in many ways. But that's not it. The church it constitutes the true youth of the world. In missionary countries, in places where Christianity is being discovered for the first time or or it's still very young. It's very easy to associate the church with youthfulness and the church bringing newness. So I invite you to focus today on this image of the church as the true youth of the world. There's this false dichotomy in sometimes in the modern mind that the church represents the old. And, and, and the old, also in that mindset, is not appreciated in the way it should be appreciated, but the old is looked at some, like something that needs to be overcome and relegated just to the past. We know, we, know that, we know that is not true. We know that there's much, there's good and bad in the past, but guess what? There's good and bad today, and there's going to be good and bad tomorrow. And so, so, when, when we look objectively at things, we realize, well, we are, there's much we are grateful for uh, because of the church and because of her past. There's much more that God has in store for us and for the world. And that is, the, tr the church constitutes the true youth of the world. Because the church rege is regenerated by the Holy Spirit and regenerates. That was, that was the whole intent of Vatican II Council, from, which occurred from 1962 until 1965, was to, to bring about this re renewal of the church, which was not in any way to be opposed to her past, but it was to, 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 really, um, to, to really allow the Holy Spirit um, to, to renew us, and 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 um, and and to bring about new ways to um, to 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 bring the good news, the joyful news, to the people of today, and so the church is regenerated by the Holy Spirit and constitutes the true youth of the world. But there there are two conditions here: as long as she remains faithful to her being and to her mission. So. When some people talk about the church and talk about want to change, want changes in the church, um, we have to look always: Are these changes 
according to her being and to her mission or not. Because guess what? The you and I did not found the church. We don't we 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 are not the ones who have started the church. The church was started by Jesus Christ and and the church was given an identity by Jesus Christ and by the apostles. And Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will lead you to the fullness of the truth. So the Holy Spirit always assists the church. That's the Holy Spirit assists the church. So this church is infallible, infallible. Okay. So the church does not err in, in, in her mission to, to save humanity, to save people. But, you know, we have, we will be successful and you, we will be youthful as long as we are faithful and we remain faithful to the church's true being. And again, when we talk about the church's true being and about her mission, it's not about one, what each comes up with about the church, but it's what the church says about herself and about what Christ says about the church and how, this, how that has hand, been handed down to us. So actually, tradition with capital T, I'm not speaking about minor traditions with, 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 with um, you know, low case T, but tradition in the sense that what, what, is, what is given to us, that process of transmission that comes to us from Christ through the apostles and through the generations following them through their successors, the, all the wealth and the richness of the church, that is... Um, that, 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 that has to, to still form us and inform us and inform the future. Specific to, to each age and to the ways of each age. So that is, that is very important that, that, that each generation welcomes. That's this beautiful heritage and discerns with the Holy Spirit and within, within those, those confines that Christ has established for his church. That, that we continue this mission of renewed youthfulness, okay, with the Holy Spirit and, and uh, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So, um, so the church in her, um, in her youthfulness recognizes, um, it's, it recognizes herself and those who feel themselves to be the bearers of life and hope and of the task of ensuring that there will be a tomorrow for the history of today. Right. So that is that we're always forward looking and vice versa. How can those who in every period of this history uh, more intensely experience in themselves the impetus of life, the expectation of hope for the future, the need for true renewal, not be secretly in harmony with the church animated by the spirit of Christ? So um, while we talk sometimes about generational conflict, um, that is what not should be occurring in the church. Because it's the same body of the church that exists over time and in different places. And yes, while there will be differences and there have to be differences, like, like in, in, in the shape of, in, you know, in the aspect of every human being, our DNA remains the same. But our aspect changes um, as we progress through the various phases of life. So um, something that could summarize this paragraph is um, an invitation of Pope John uh, XXIII, uh, Saint John XXIII. He was the Pope who started the Vatican II Council. Pope Paul VI was the one who finished it. Um, pope John XXIII, at the beginning of the Council, told everyone, to, told to, uh, the, the, the young to remember that the Church has not started with them. And told the old to remember that the church will not end with them. So I like that, you know, young people, remember that the world has not started with you and the church has not started with you. And elderly people, remember that the church is not ending with you and will not end with you and the, so the world. Okay? So... I find in that harmony in coming in the coming together of these two um, these 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 two mindsets, right? The mind, mindset of youthfulness and a mindset of of experience um, after after a long life. So um, then, so that's that's what Pope um, Paul VI is saying that 
um, we, the, the young need the past and, and the present needs the young to look forward to the future. We think that in fact such a correspondent, it, correspondence exists, not always visibly, but certainly deep down despite many accidental contradictions. This is why in this exhortation on Christian joy, our mind and hearts urge us to turn very decisively to the young people of today. We do so in the name of Christ and of his church, despite her human failings. He wishes to be glorious with no speck or wrinkle or anything like that, but holy and faultless. So that is, um, that is a quote I lost here on my, um, my, my references, but um, that is a quote from, uh, from Scripture. In doing so, we are not giving way to a sentimental cult of youth. Considered only from the viewpoint of age, youth is a short-lived thing. The excessive attention that is given to it quickly becomes nostalgic or ridiculous. But this is not, a true, this is not true in what concerns the spiritual meaning of this moment of grace. Youth lived in the proper way. What catches our attention is essentially the correspondence between the soaring impulse of a being which is naturally receptive to the appeals and demands of his high destiny as a person, and the dynamism of the Holy Spirit, from whom the Church ceaselessly receives her own youthfulness, her substantial fidelity to herself, and at the heart of this faithfulness, her living creativity. So, what Pope Paul VI is looking here is not a kind of sentimental attitude towards youthfulness and to the world of the young, but he says what catches our attention is essentially the correspondence between the soaring impulse of a being which is naturally receptive to the appeals and demands of his high destiny as a person. So that is what, 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 what he contemplates here when he looks at the world of, of the young, right? The appeal and demands of the high destiny as a person. I will never forget... Um, um, one of the world, the only World Youth Day that I attended um, with Pope John Paul II, in which, uh, in which he said, um, this was in Rome in the Jubilee year of 2000, um, outside, of, outside of Rome, we were gathered about 2 million, I hope I'm not mistaken, about 2 million young people from all over the world. And I will never forget in, in, in uh, his homily, Pope John Paul II at that event said to all of us young people, he said, when you think about, when, when you dream big in your life, you dream about Christ. When you long for happiness and you seek happiness, you, you, you long for Christ, you're seeking Christ. When, when you have great projects and, and you have great passions and you great aspirations, you, it's Christ that you're seeking. When you're seeking beauty and joy, you, you're, and you're seeking Christ, you know? And, and that, that has always has stuck with me ever since, you know? That, um, and this is what I think Pope Paul VI has said in different words, um, you know, the high destiny as a person in the dynamism of the Holy Spirit, right? The, uh, dynamism means, you know, comes from, from dyna dynamic um, and um, dynamos in, in Greek means power. The, the, the dynamos means power. So there's a power, there's a strength, right? In the Holy Spirit, the breath of God. And, 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 and that's, that's what Pope, uh, ben Pope uh, Paul VI says here, from whom the church ceaselessly receives her own youthfulness. So is the breath of God that makes us young and, and continues to make us young, you know? And that was one, one of the things that, that when you looked at John Paul II and, in, in, you know, whether at the beginning of his pontificate, he was, he was very energetic, but towards the end of his pontificate, he was, he was old and, 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 and struggling physically. And, and, you know, and when you think about how easily he connected with young people. And, and he even said uh, that, again, that World Youth Day in Rome 2000, um, he said something in Polish, um, how um, 
It's like you become young if you live with the young. And, 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 and he was just energized by being with, with young people. But that energy came to him from the Holy Spirit. I mean, that man, even if he was 82 year old or 80 year old, he was, um, he was young in his heart. And, and, and you could sense that um, because it was the Holy Spirit who animated him. The dynamism, the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit gives the church youthfulness and substantial fidelity to herself. Right, so it's the same spirit that makes the church renews the church, but renews the church according to her very being and her very mission. And at the heart of this faithfulness, her living creativity. Right, when there is when God, where God is, there is creativity. There is there is new life. There is there is true future, and that is what the Holy Spirit is doing in the church, especially in the young people. It is a correspondence which is transitory and threatened, yes, but still full of meaning and rich and generous promises. From the encounter between the human being, which for a few decisive years has youth at his command, and the church in her permanent spiritual youthfulness, there necessarily arises on both sides a joy of high quality and a fruitful promise. So, um, Paul the VI says, talks here about the youth, as very prominent in the life of the church. And when I think again about the World Youth Days, which John Paul II started, Pope Benedict continued, and Pope Francis too, when you think about how many ways, in how many ways um, we, 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 we had the chance to, to see how, what an important aspect of the church life are the youth, and how important it is that, 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 that the church herself learns from the young people how to live the gospel um, and and um, and that 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 um, that is that is a, that is a source of, of great joy um, when um, when when this world youth day was was organized in in Rome in 2000 you know um, it was uh, the city of Rome is used to a lot of events um, uh, being the capital um, of, of Italy um, and the capital of, of the Catholic Church um, is a city that is used to, to large events. And often these events, whether, you know, especially when, when you know, they, they, they leave behind a lot of, you know, it's not, it's, they're not always easy to manage, right? And um, there were concerns during World, World Youth Day in 2000 about two million young people plunging from all over the world, um, coming down upon the city. What, what will what will will it be like? You know, and um, I think it was John Paul II who noticed that while for a whole week there were two million young people from all over the world in that city, um, there was not one crime that occurred. Um, nothing was damaged. Um, everyone behaved, behaved, um, you know, at their best. And what a testimony to the whole city, how, how that, that, um, that large gathering could, could be done, you know, a gathering of happy people of, you know, there was just joy. And, um, and I remember how on the way back, because this was outside of Rome in, in literally in, in, in the fields, um, there was no no place in the city itself to to host such a large gathering of people, and um, and there was no way for the public transportation system to 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 get two million people to um, walk there to the location and get back to to Rome. I think it was about uh, I forgot exactly, but it was it it it, it took us going there and getting back on foot about about. Um, Eight nine miles, um, and um, and 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 this this huge flow of of young people um, walking trekking eight miles outside of Rome and coming back into the into the city, and I remember it was a hot day of summer August in Rome, very hot, 
And as we were uh, walking on the streets, people from their balconies were throwing buckets of water over us because it was really hot. It was, there was just joy. There was just joy and celebration and faith. And, and um, you know, um, it was, there were masses and there were opportunities for reconciliation and people singing and dancing. And it was, it was just, just wonderful. And learning, there was, there was catechesis. There were, there were so many ways in which we, 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 we lived the faith. And, and, and that was the only World Youth Day that I participated at. But it, it was such a beautiful glimpse into the world of the young and how important it is for the church to, to do that. I'm reading here from some of the, the comments. Um, joyful time was being a youth minister. Reva, I did not know that you were involved in youth ministry. Yeah, watching the young grow in their faith with true glory. Yes, that, that is, I, I can relate to that. So um, going forward reading, um, the church as the people of God on pilgrimage towards the future kingdom must be able to perpetuate herself and therefore renew herself down succeeding human generations. For her, this is a condition for fruitfulness and even simply for life itself. It is therefore necessary that at each moment of her history, the rising generation should in some way fulfill the hope of the preceding generations, the very hope of the church, which is to transmit without end the gift of God, the truth and the life. This is why in every generation, young Christians justly ratify with full consciousness and unconditionally, unconditionally the covenant entered into by them in the sacrament of baptism and reinforced in the sacrament of confirmation. Right, so, um, so that that too, right? We the church needs to perpetuate herself throughout the the centuries because there is so much good to be handed down, and that is God Himself. That is the truth and the life which every generation needs and gratifies, um, and 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 that is um, you know if if one if one is um, if one is um, Growing in a in a in a Christian family, in a Catholic family, um, you know, and they 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 have already been baptized. You know, we have those those um, paths that we we walk through with our youth or for young for first communion and and confirmation. You know, and um, I remember um, in one of my theology classes at the seminary, uh, the actually it was liturgy the the definition um, uh, when we we're talking about the sacrament of confirmation. Um, uh, the, the professor said, uh, uh, what is the sacrament of confirmation? And we're waiting for a long definition. And he said, the sacrament of confirmation is the sacrament of the exit from the church. And we were all shocked. Like, what do you, wow, <laughs> right? But just think about that. For a lot of our youth, unfortunately, that is one of the biggest challenges for us as church to not make it the sacrament of the exit of or graduation from the church. It is not the sacrament of graduation from the church. It is actually is is the is is the is a new beginning, right? It is the end of the the the, the initiation to to the faith. That is what is the end. The confirmation and first communion are the the completion of the sacraments of the initiation, right? The baptism is the first one. They are, they are supposed to prepare us for, for the future, right? And even if you wanted to consider it as a graduation, graduation is, is, is because you're, you're looking forward to using all that you, you, you've received, right? To put, to put that into, to bring that to fruitfulness. It's not supposed to end there. Um, and, and that is the same about, about, about the church, right? We need to, uh, with, with our youth, to find ways to, to, to continue to, to, so we live properly these sacraments of, of First Communion and Confirmation, um, you know, as, as, as a foundation for the great call that, um, which we, we, we have in God. So um, that, is, um, that, is, that is a great challenge for our age, and Pope, uh, Pope, uh, John, Pope uh, Paul VI here speaks about that. He says, in this regard, our age of profound change is not without grave difficulties for the church. We who have, together with the whole college of bishops, anxiety for all the churches and preoccupation for their immediate future are well aware of this. 
But at the same time, being supported by faith and hope, which does not disappoint us, we are sure that grace will not fail the Christian people. And we hope that they themselves will not fail grace or reject, as some are gravely tempted to do, the inheritance of truth and holiness handing down to this decisive moment in the history of the world. And this is the point. We think that we have every reason to have confidence in Christian youth. Youth will not fail the church if within the church there are enough older people able to understand it, to love it, to guide it, and to open up to it a future by passing on to it with complete fidelity the truth which endures. So this is, I love this, right? He says, uh, first of all, that while well, there is temp a great temptation about among the youth of today to, um, to, to do away with the inheritance of truth and holiness handed down, um, he says, I believe we have every reason to have confidence in Christian youth. Youth will not fail the church. If within the church there are enough older people able to understand it, to love it, to guide it, and to open up to it a future. So this challenge is for you and I, this challenge is for us to understand the youth, to love young people, to guide them, and to open up for our young people um, a future by passing on with complete fidelity the truth which endures, right? The deep truth that there is a God, the deep truth that this God is, is, has the face of Jesus Christ, that this God is, that, that our happiness can be only in God, and, and, and this God is with us and guides us, and this God is present to us. And this is not just theory, this is, this is, this is life, and this is how we, we, we um, this is, this is our, our challenge, right? So while Pope Paul VI is speaking here to the world of the, of the young, he's actually speaking to everyone in the church because we are all called to work for one another. And, and this, is, um, this is the challenge for all of us in regards to our youth, to understand, to love, to guide, and to open up, okay? And there, in this way, if we do this, then the church, the, and then the youth will not fail the church. And there, when you look at, while, you know, sometimes um, uh, statistics uh, can, um, can, can um, bring you sadness, you have to look also at, um, at, at the, at the full part of the um, of the glass, you know, not just at the empty part, and just think about the empty part is the challenge for us to do more and to do better. the 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 full part is is something to look at and to rejoice in and to celebrate. There are so many young people who are living the faith beautifully, and 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 when you think in them, we see. The future, we see the promise of the future and the hope of the future. And, and that is something that, that, that we, have to, we have to look at. Um, you know, there's so many examples, even in these days uh, of, of the pandemic, how young people are stepping up and, and, and leading. Um, you know, there's this video that I, I saw some time ago about this kid in, in uh, England who... Um, has um, um, has has um, a, a disease which is a very heavy cross for him, and and how um, how this kid he he's praying every day the Divine Mercy Chaplet, um, and 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 praying that on I think he's doing that on Facebook Live, and um, and and he wants to do that he feels that it, that is a mission, when you think about and. And, and just how encouraging it is to see a kid so passionate about that prayer and that apostolate and, and he's doing it. Um, and, and thousands, of, if not more, of people benefit from that. Um, there, there are young people who are uh, either canonized or, or in the process of being canonized. Um, and um, 
and and when you read their stories is 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 just amazing um you know so much to to learn to celebrate and to to appreciate so um when you think of the patron saint of of young of young people um saint pier giorgio frassati an italian uh italian saint um that is that is that is the that is the promise of the future right if we if we um, are able to understand them, to love them, to guide them, and to open up for them the future. Um, so then Pope Paul VI says, then new workers, resolute and fervent, will in their turn enter upon spiritual and apostolic work in the fields which are white and ready for the harvest. Then the sower and the reaper will sh share the same joy of the kingdom. Right? That is another, another quote uh, from the gospel. So we are called to share in the same joy of the kingdom, those who sow and those who reap, right? And both the, and we have the young as reapers and sowers at, their, at, at, at the same time, and also us, um, you know, the, the, the older generations uh, who are um, both sowers and reapers. So we are called to the same joy of the kingdom. It seems to us, in fact, that the present world crisis, which is marked by a great confusion among many young people, and, and, and here Pope uh, Paul VI was writing this in 1975, which, which was, you know, after the, the um, 1968 protests and, and all, that, all that era, um, which, you know, much of that was occurring within the youth um, and, um, you know, mo movement of uh, questioning, everything and 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 um in many ways um you know that in itself was a deep quest for uh for truth and for for depth and and for coherence and um you know uh, a great uh, a great challenge um that that was and and still remains in in many in many facts you know um um the sexual revolution and all that what 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 young people are, are really seeking um, deep, deep down. So he says, um, it seems to us, in fact, that the present world crisis, which is marked by great confusion among many young people, partly betrays a senile and definitely out-of-date aspect of commercial, hedonistic, and materialistic civilization, which is still trying to present itself as the gateway to the future. So, right, so th there's... Um, there, there, there's something, something right that those protests were pointing out, right? There was a whole set of, of things in the world that they were protesting against. And young people have this, this, this urge to, to change things. And, and, and sometimes, um, you know, the, the, the critique that comes from the younger generations may be harsh to hear, but, but it actually, we need that um, if we want to renew ourselves, not just the church, right? Pope Paul VI here speaks about aspects of the commercial, um, hedonistic and materialistic civilization. Um, even it, it's very excessive, the instinctive reaction of many young people against this illusion takes on a certain importance. This generation is waiting for something else. Having suddenly been deprived of protective traditions then bitterly deceived by the vanity and spiritual vacuum of false novelties, atheistic ideologies, and certain deleterious forms of mysticism, will not this generation come to discover or rediscover the sure and unalterable newness of the divine mystery revealed in Jesus Christ? Has not he, in the splendid words of Saint Irenaeus, brought all newness by bringing his own person? And this is why we are pleased to dedicate more express, expressly to you, the young Christians of the present day, the promise of the church of tomorrow, the celebration of spiritual joy. We cordially, cordially urge you to be attentive to the inner appeals which come to you. Right? This is, this is the, the invitation and the challenge of Pope Paul VI to young people. To be attentive to the inner appeals which come to you. We urge you to raise up your eyes your hearts, your fresh energies to the heights to accept the effort of the soul's yearnings. And we wish to give you this assurance. However debilitating the prejudice diffused everywhere today, 
of the human spirit's inability to discover permanent and life-giving truth, equally profound and liberating is the joy of divine truth finally recognized in the Church. Gaudium de Veritate. That means joy comes out of truth. Joy coming from the truth. This is the joy which is offered to you. It gives itself to those who love it enough to seek it tenaciously. By disposing yourselves to accept it and to communicate it, you will ensure together your own fulfillment in Christ and the next historical stage of the people of God. So um, that, is, um, I, we, that is the end of uh, the sixth section of uh, this beautiful reflection on Christian joy by Paul Paul VI, Joy and Hope in the Hearts of the Young. There's so much to digest here, so much to reflect on. Um, Carol says, praying with Carson on Facebook. Is the young boy praying? Yes, he is. I forgot his name, but he is the young boy doing that. But there's so many examples. There's so many examples when you think about, you know, how, how many things young, young people can come up with, you know, with their creativity, with their, their, their energy. And, and, and it is a joy. And that is, that is true in the church, you know. For me, oh, again, I... I I used to think, and I'm still am probably a relatively young priest, you know, but for me to see someone as like Deacon Michael, um, you know, preparing to become a priest, to see our seminarians, and, and I'm, um, you know, um, uh, I'm happy to, to share with you that um, the, new, uh, the, new, the newliest ordained deacon in our diocese, Deacon Noah Thelen, as of last uh, Saturday, will be active in our parish as well as, as St. Stephen's over the summer. Um, contacting people and, um, and, and especially the, the homebound and the sick. And, uh, you know, just to see, the, the, to see what each young person brings with them and each young priest and young deacon. You know, for me, it is, you know, they, they, bring, they bring new ways of doing, right? When I, I, I um, shared with you that um, I'm not, um, I'm not uh, by any means ashamed to say that I'm copying some of the good things that I'm learning from Deacon Michael. He's just entering the house right now. And, and how, how, you know, his, his way of reaching out to people in the middle of this pandemic has been inspiring to me and I learned from him. And, and this, is, this is just one example of how much we can learn from, from our young people and, um, and uh, all this, all this good is to, to be celebrated. I will tell you something else. A great joy is when I see, when I see our, our young couples, how they, um, how, how, how they prepare for marriage and, and the, the joy of, of their commitment and, and how they, they build up um, their, their future. And, and to see their, their, their energy and desire to, to be involved in the life of the church and, 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 and to, to bring forth life, not just physical life as a family, and, and, but, but really to, 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 to bring life to the, to the church by their example. And, and so there, there's so much, so much um, there are so many sources of joy that, um, that, that, that we have if we only have eyes to see, uh, if we only have a heart to see all that. And that is kind of the, the gaze of, of Pope Paul VI. That was the gaze of John Paul II, who saw so much potential. And, and um, you know, that, was the, the, that is the gaze of Pope Francis, who keeps saying that, that we need a church that is outgoing, a new church that explores new ways of reaching out. And, and, and he insists on this usefulness of, of the church. So, um, so these are these are our invitations for today as sources of joy and, um, and and promises of joy. So let's focus on them as we go about about our day. Um, and I will see you. Um, I don't think I will be able on Memorial Day to um, to to be to go um, live, but um, I will give you appointment for next Wednesday at noon. So not next Monday, but next Wednesday at noon. So wish you a blessed uh, Memorial Day week and we pray for, let's say a prayer for um, our fallen, uh, uh, fallen soldiers whom we remember this Memorial Day. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God 
rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God bless you, and we will, I will see you next Wednesday.